Okay, so we just did a compression test. Nothing really out of the ordinary, except for this cylinder right here. Every other cylinder was 150-ish around that region. This one was like 180. So I don't really know what that tells me, but we're not lacking on the compression. So, um, what I'm gonna do next is, I don't know what to call it, cause I don't know what the hell it is. Um, like an, an injector leak down test, I suppose. Um, and that's hopefully gonna tell me if we have a problem with number eight and number seven injector. Um, it's not compression. I don't really believe that it is spark. But I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. It could be wrong. It could be spark. It could be in the harness somewhere. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. So we're gonna do, we're gonna check fuel. And if that all checks out, um, I don't know. I, I guess we're just gonna have to drive it. And then we'll move on to like brakes or something. I sketched out with these lines here, but you know, not much I can really do. But end up needing to be replaced. Goes down to the front. what I assume would be a valve of some kind. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you updated on that. No, the valve is right here. The valve block. Whatever. Yeah. So I don't get why it goes down there and then comes back. But it's all that's rusty is up here up front. I don't know. I don't know. It just I don't know. Okay. That's got shit in it, so that's cool. Good shit, not bad shit. Alright, so I guess I'll bring you back when I got this injector leak down tester figured out. Alright, so I've kind of figured it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to take you through the process. We're going to do number four. So, system select powertrain system, and then fuel system, fuel balance, injector balance test is where I'm at in this particular launch software. So, we're going to do number four. Bam. I'm going to prime the fuel system. You record that number. We'll verify 56 is what I'm gonna say. 56 is already there. And then we're gonna pulse the injector. We're gonna record what we see. I'm gonna say five, six, seven. 37 PSI, which has been the usual for all the rest of the injectors. So, I'll take you through for another couple, couple of tests. Primer fuel system. I'm not going to, it's going to automatically. We're going to record, which is the same number and pulse our injector. Bam. Injector 3. We're going to read it. 37. So we're going to record. Go to cylinder 2. It's going to prime it up for us. Pulsar injector. 
37 PSI. After. So, okay, we go to number one. Same number. We're gonna pulse. 37 again. Wait, now I gotta go cycle the key because I didn't record the first two injectors that I did. Cycle the key. I'll only allow one pulse of the injector per key cycle. So we're gonna go to number eight again. Oh, maybe we gotta go back. Injector balance. Okay, so I'll show you actually. Let's go back. Cancel. Back. I'll show you where to find this. All the way back. Alright, this is your first screen. We're going to system select. Power screen. Power system modules. Power system. Power train system. Blah. Actuation test. Fuel system. Fuel injector balance. Yep. It's going to ask you if there's a fuel pressure gauge connected. It can only be flowed post once per ignition cycle. Number eight. Let's go prime again. It's really rinse and repeat. Then this is, check, check this out, ready, I'm going to hit the button, the button is pressed, pressed. Oh, okay, well. Interesting. Hopefully, hopefully it'll let me do it now. I figured it out. Okay, we're back. And to take the connector out, cycle, like start the the engine, shut her down, like uh, close the app, reopen the app, reconnect. Um, yeah, make sure you record this. So we're gonna go do injector seven. Up. Oh, it's not good. Why is that doing that? Connected. Go. Okay. Ah, oh, that's fucked. Oh, 
at this again. Sure. Yep. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Okay, number eight. Actually, let's try number five. Let's see what's up with this. Okay, so seven and eight are problem childs. Cylinder seven cannot seem to hold pressure. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to try cylinder 8. So cylinder 8 actually holds pressure, which is weird. Pulse. I could hear it, barely. And we went down maybe a PSI. So I don't think that is good. So let me try number seven again. What I'm gonna have to do unplug that and recycle the key. I don't think I really have to, but I like to not have load on the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Bring it around now, mate. Bring it around. I should have bore a scope and we could see. Well, I don't think that would really do anything. Do what you think? I'm going to let you guys hang out right here. I'm going to go crank the engine a little bit. Get an explosion of gas. Yes, we did. Holy shit. Yeah, that injector is excessively leaky. Okay, so we need two injectors. So now it's not leaking like it's bad. Okay, that's weird. Where are we at? 36. Well, that did not work for me. Number seven. Pulse. Okay, um, I want to try seven again. weird very very weird okay so we found our issue with cylinder number eight okay we're back um so knowing what we know now we're gonna go ahead with the fuel injector rail removal and um, I'm waiting for parts to arrive from the advanced auto varieties. Um, it's set around four o'clock, so I got some time to muck about. Um, and I think when I get it all torn apart, I still gotta 
finish that up. I get it all torn apart, I'm going to just throw the fuel rail on the bench and go from there. So let's see what we gotta do here. Okay, so I'm gonna assume we have to remove this guy. It looks like a couple of 10 millimeters in order to move on this harness. Looks like we just, just enough. Yeah, we just gotta move it just enough. Um, take the safety clip out, pop that line off. What else is needed here? I know there are a couple bolts, a couple more 10 mils, two, one, two, and then two over there. And then we should be ready to just uh, pull up on it. I think we're gonna remove this vacuum line dingus, just so it's out of harm's way. It's gonna be interesting. I think I really wanna replace that ground strap. And then there's another one that's supposed to go up here. Yeah, this one right there. GM loves to use these braided cables, which, you know, it's, they it carry a lot more, I guess, current through it. It's more surface area, but in um, places such as Rust Belt, it is not a good idea. So, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that. Um, yeah. And I'll bring you guys back. Oh, one thing I do want to show you real quick. If I can. So these little clips. Sorry, I can't really. <clears throat> there. For the injectors. This little clip pulls directly out. And when you go to put it back in, this part goes in front of the little tabby do jams down this part goes behind it so it locks it in place you can't move it back or forth when I um well let me see if I can't give you a better vantage point so you can see what it is I'm talking about Uno momento oh, for corn's sake Sorry. Okay. Here we go now. There we go. There we went. And here we go. Alright. So. Okay. Okay. Now we got it started. Now, to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, that little, the little tiny piece goes right here. Oh, gotta kinda work it in there. Push down. And now you can see we're fully seated. Now you can see we're fully seated. Okay, anyways, that's the gist of it. I come back when I get this all figured out and pulled off. Okay, it took a little bit of persuading, but we got them off. Um, one thing I did not realize, you got this bolt right here that holds this whole harness on. So you pull that off and you can move it right out your way. Other thing is this little line actually comes all the way off, so that was cool. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that was it. I took that off. I took a bunch of other things so I could just move the harness right out of my way. It's uh, pretty, pretty nice. I'm going to go grab the shop back and try and vacuum up some of this crud while I have the chance. I hope we're not introduce more crud into the system. Um, let's see, so this would be facing, so 
these two right here are the problem child. This one I believe in particular, because that one was, yeah, this one is number eight right here. And we can kind of tell that it's had some issues. It had a blockage of some sort in it, so hopefully Placing this injector will remedy that issue. Um, but I'm just going to go around and kind of just carefully clean off each injector tip. I'm going to go grab the vacuum, clean that stuff out, and um, the next uh, next scene should be me installing the new injector and throwing it back on the truck. So I assume I haven't taken injectors off of a vehicle like this. Um, these little clips here pop off. And then the injector should just be able to pull right out. So until, yeah, I will uh, see you guys soon. Clip. We've got the injectors. Okay, um, everything is back together. Plugged in, that's all plugged in. Fuel's plugged in. I was gonna service the fuel filter, but it is not a serviceable not a serviceable item. Which I really find weird. Like I would have thought there would have been a fuel filter after the fuel pump. I don't know. Um because Rock Auto has a fuel filter for the 5.3, this engine, this setup. Um, I went to Advance, it didn't show one. I ended up grabbing one anyways, and I should have just listened to the computer, because it was right, again. So, before I put the hood back on it, I'm going to connect the battery and make sure we have no fuel leaks first let's see any so far okay and we're back for the first initial startup Eventually. Okay. Go down to seven, eight. She's pissed out. Fire current. Yes. Yes. Super cool. Okay, I'm gonna go out. Where? Oh, well, I'll take you up with me. Oh, oh, that's. <laughs> oh my lord, this has been one hell of a fight, but we got it, it sounded way better now, oh yes, oh yes.
so much better. That's what a healthy Chevy should sound like. So next thing on the docket would be, since this is no longer going to be a thing, I'm just going to have to get her a regular mirror that should suffice. Um, and I want to clear out this headliner. At least try and get it stuck up somewhat. Uh, um, aside from that, we have those the two codes we need to look at still. Your bag light is on. Um, one of them I'm going to assume is going to be a sensor, which is passenger. The other one is going to be, I think, under here. There's a wire that gets, I mean, it goes back and forth, 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 all set. Um, so I think a wire down there is broke somewhere, is at least I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, that makes me very, very happy. I mean, goodness. I am so, so happy. We have finally figured it out. I'm sure mom's gonna be happy too when she's able to drive her truck this winter. Oh yeah. Well, I hope I was able to help guide somebody or to help somebody in the diagnosing process. Um, I, I don't really think I was able to convey the processes I was going through. Um, but I, I just went with what I knew. Um, the truck needed plugs and wires anyways. They haven't been changed in a long time, so I, I threw a set of plugs in there and wires. Um, it didn't seem to help any... This is before I, we were trying to figure out cylinder 7 and 8. Um, Threw the plugs wires in it, got a baseline, got scan tool out, and after some running, we learned the seven and eight were the problem child, problem children, cylinders. Um, constantly misfiring, constant. So, still thinking along the lines of an ignition problem we went ahead and switched the coils, swapped the coils with uh, 8 and 6 I swapped and 5 and 7 I swapped. Didn't really change anything. Um, after that, it, I wanted to check to see if there's any mechanical damage, uh, namely in cylinder 8 because it was constant misfire, constant. I took the um, the two rocker arms off and I was able to hear the um, lifters expand so I knew that um, well I kind of took a gamble on that I didn't know but I, I assumed the lifters weren't collapsed um, the push rods were straight so that wasn't an issue um, after that, I went ahead and got a compression tester just to verify, just to verify again that we had compression. So at this point, I knew we had spark. Um, we verified compression. We had air. So the last piece to the puzzle there was um, fuel. So I got. Uh, fuel pressure gauge and 
using this scan tool. Oh, oh, a little bit of misfire edge. Um, so using the scan tool, I was able to figure that out. Uh, and isolate the two most problem injectors. I mean, there's still a couple that misfire every now and then. That's kind of, I'm going to say a, it needs to be run situation. Anyways, we figured those two out, went ahead and acquired the parts. Um, we just got done with that. Now we're kind of, I'm just kind of letting it run, um, wrapping this video up. So yeah, um, once again, a lot of, I think of them as mentors on YouTube, uh, South Main Auto, Scanner Danner, and a, a few, a handful of other people out there that I watch regularly that inspired me and gave me the confidence to go ahead and pursue learning more about diagnosis, automotive diagnosis. Um, I'm slowly getting the electronics aspect of it down. I know how to turn a wrench. Um, I know how to change a part, but that's really nothing if you don't first know how to diagnose it. You spend a lot of money real fast with the part scanning. So, very fortunate that I have all these resources and these mentors um, to help guide me. So, I think I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, again, I, I hope I helped somebody somewhere either make that leap to diagnose something or just helped with this issue in general. Um, so if you guys liked the content, give it the uh, thumbs up. <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, share. Um, if you didn't like it, uh, my apologies. I will try and do better next time. So with that, thanks.